Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Brachas Daf Memches. We're on Mem Zayin Amid Beis, three lines from the bottom. Says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yechonon, Katan Peireach, Mezamnen Olaf. Now we know that in order for a Katan to be considered to be a Gadol, for a minor to have reached adulthood, we require two conditions to be met. Number one, Shanim, and number two, Simonim. He needs to be Shanim. He needs to have the right amount of years. He needs to be thirteen years old, and also to have brought. Simone godless, signs of maturity. He needs to have grown shtei sa'aris, two pubic hairs. Says the Gemara, Amar v'yechanan, katan, even if he's merely a katan with regard to years. He's not yet 13 years old, but he's a katan peireach. He's already sprouted forth those two hairs. If so, mezamnen alav, we can include him into our zimun. For missing a man to complete our quorum for zimun, we can complete it using this cotton pereach. Tani nami hachi. We learned a brice in support of this halacha. Says the brice a cotton shevish te saris. A cotton has already grown two hairs. Mezamen and all. We can include him in the zimun. Meshaloyevish te saris. But if he does not have the two saris, a mezamen and all. We can include him in the zimun. Continues the brice. We aren't too particular. We, we don't discriminate regarding a cotton. Explains the Gemara. Hagufa kasha seems to be an, in, an inherent kasha, an inherent difficulty. It's a self-contradiction. First you say, Amris, hey saris in. If he has already grown those two hairs, then we can include him in the zimun. But otherwise, well, hey loy, but otherwise not. Then you go and say, hey madakti we aren't particular with the katan. This implies that even without the two saris, we can include him in the zimun. So how do you explain this? Says the Gemara, what do we mean when we say Eim Medakti Melkatan? We're simply coming to explain the first part of the Bryce. La Suya Mai. What are we coming to include? Lav La Suya Katan Pereach. The Bryce is simply trying to include the Katan Pereach and explain as follows. We are not Medakti with years. Even though the Katan has not yet re- reached of age, he's not yet 13 years old. Nevertheless, since he had already sprouted forth the two hairs, he's a Katan Pereach. He's eligible to be included in the Zimon in accordance with the Shita of Rabbi Yechanan. Concludes the Gemara. Now we mentioned earlier a list of various leniencies regarding inclusion in Zimon. Some say a Orain, the Ark of the Sefer Torah. Some say Shabbos can be included. Some say the two Talmud Chacham are considered to be three. Says the Gemara. No, less Hilchasa. The final ruling is not Kechalani Shmaita. Doesn't follow all these leniencies, but rather Ella. The only one that can be included in a zimun is this katan perech, like we just mentioned, and also kihadam rav nachman. Katan, a minor, he a who recognizes, who understands, lemim avarchen, to who we are saying the brichas hamazain. Even though he's very young, some say this means he's at least six years old, and he's conscious, he's aware to who the brach is directed to, mezamin and all of, he can be included in the zimun. As the Gemara will illustrate with the following story. Abai Virava, Abai Virava, when they were very young children, have a Yasvi Kamei the Rabbah, they were sitting in front of Rabbah. Amalu Rabbah, so Rabbah asked them the following question. Lemim Avarchen, to who do we make the bracha? Amri Leh said, they responded, Rachmana, to the merciful one, Tashem. So he proceeded to ask them, Rachmana Echa Yasif, where is Hashem located? Where does he sit? Masha explains, they wanted to see, perhaps they're merely mouthing, repeating words that they heard from their teacher, from their parents. So he wanted to question them further to see if they really understand what they were saying. So he said to them, Where is Hashem? So this is how they responded. Rava pointed up to the ceiling, upwards. Abaye, he went outside of the house. He pointed towards the heaven. Omalu Rabba, so Rabba was so impressed by their extraordinary responses, and he said, based on these responses, Ta'arvaychu Rabban Havisu, both of you who become great Torah scholars, your extraordinary response is indicative of your glorious future. Hainu Dharma Inshi, on this can be applied the common phrase that people say, Boitzen, Boitzen, little, uh, Little bites and little uh, uh, um, pumpkins. 
mikhat yediyah are noticeable as soon as they come out of their sap. As soon as they come out of their sap, they're ready, we can already discern the future quality of the pumpkin. Here too, based on your responses, even in your very youth, we can already see to what glorious future you are destined to. So in conclusion, who can be included in the Zimun? Either a katan pireyach or a katan if he is yedeya, he is aware, lemim avarchi understands to who the bracha is directed. Tesis points out that regarding completing the minion, for that we can still follow the shita of Rabbi Yaisi who says that a katan Hamutal baris, even in the cradle, can be included, can be, can be used to complete the minion asar. Since we already have nine, we're merely completing the minion of ten. Nine is the, is the main element. Ten is merely the completion, and we can use even a katan with regard to ten. The Gemara here that discounts all the leniencies. The Gemara here is speaking regarding the zimun of three people. In that case, we cannot use all those leniencies mentioned in the Gemara earlier. Incidentally, the Vilna Gaon says that when the Gemara said that we can include the Arain, the Gemara said Tisha, nine people and Arain are considered to be ten, says the Vilna Gaon, Arain is a Rashi Tevis, an acronym for Hashem. Arain is Aleph, Reish, Vav, Nun, Echad, the one that is Raya, that sees all, Ve'in and Nira, but he's not seen. It's referring to Hashem, who completes the minimum. When we have nine Jews, Hashem, the Arain, is Mitzdarif and completes them and makes them into ten. Continues the Gemara, Amr Ab Yuda, Braid the Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas and Shmuel the Rav. He told us the following halach: Tisha achlu dagan ve'echad achal yarak. Suppose we have nine people that ate bread, and one, the tenth one, merely ate a vegetable, mitzdarfen. He can join them and complete their minion for zimun, even though they only ate vegetables. Amr Ab Zer, by my name Rav Yuda, so I went ahead and acquired. Of Rabbi Yudah. So we know nine people can include the tenth one that merely ate a vegetable. What about if there are only eight people that ate the dogon? Can we include two people that are vegetable eaters? Shmoinamau, Shivamau, let's say we only have seven grain eaters. Can they add another three vegetable eaters? Oh, my lady, so this says Lashna, it makes no difference. Certainly, they can be included to complete the minion for Zimun. Continue with and he said as follows, Shisha, It's a pity, I regret that I haven't asked them regarding six people. If they only have six that ate Daga, can they add another four? It's a pity, I regret that I hadn't asked them that as well. I only asked them eight and seven, I stopped regarding six. And now I don't know what the Allah is regarding six. It's good that you hadn't asked. It wasn't necessary. Why? Because once you already know the halacha regarding 9 and 8 and 7, certainly 6 is no different. How some time am I? What is the reason why 9 or 8 and 7 can include the vegetable eaters into their minion? Because you already have the majority of the minion. Hachanami, Karuba, have 2 by 6. You already have the majority, you have the roiv that ate the dogon. So certainly they, they can include the vegetable eaters and complete their minion with them. There's no difference between 7 and 6. So there was no need for you to ask the halacha regarding six. So as more of the or of Zera held, that it was a pity that I didn't ask six. Why? Because perhaps you can differentiate, you can make a distinction between seven and six. Even if seven works, six won't. Savar he held a ruba the min kabina. You need a discernible and obvious roif, a noticeable majority. And that is only when you have seven, explains the Yaina. Because 7 is already two-thirds of 10. And therefore that's considered to be a ruba de minkar. And that works. But merely regarding 6 that ate dogon, that's different. Indeed, it's a majority of 10. But it's not a ruba de minkar. It's not a significant majority. It's not a, a noticeable majority. So perhaps there's room to differentiate between the two. And it's a pity, I regret that I haven't asked them regarding 6. Explain to Rabbi Niyayna, the same concept of ruba de minkar applied to 10. That seven is already considered to be a ruba de minkar on account of it being two thirds of ten. The same thing will apply regarding a mini of three, a mizuman of three. That once you have two out of three that ate dogon, they can complete their mizuman with a third one that ate a yarak. Since we have two thirds of the required amount of the required three. Continuing with the story, 
Yanai Malka or Malkasa, Yanai the king and the queen, Kericha Rifta Badadadi, they had a meal together. Umid the Katul Rabbanon, since Yanai killed out all the Rabbanon, the Gemara explains that Yanai was a king from Beis Hashmonoi, and the Chachamim questioned his legitimacy to be a Kayan, they questioned his lineage, and therefore he killed out all the Rabbanon. Says the Gemara, since there was no Rabbanon there, he had no Chacham to come and make Birchas Hamazayin for them. So the king and queen were stuck without somebody to bench for them. So Yana turned to his wife and he said, I wish somebody would give us a man that would make the Birchas Hamazayin for us. Apparently they didn't know how to bench themselves. So the queen told him, I'll make a deal with you. Swear to me, promise to be the Maisin Allah Gavra, if I bring you a person to bench for us, the Lord Mitzahar that you will not harass him, you won't persecute him. Ishtabullah, okay, so he promised. I see, say, Le Shimon Ben Shatach Achva. So she brought him Shimon Ben Shatach, her brother. She had actually hit him from Yanai, and he was, he survived from the Chacham. So she brought him to the meal. Oisvei Ben Didei Lididah. So Yanai, Placed him, he seated him between him and the king. Amr lays, he turned to Shem Meshatach and he said, Chazas, take a look. Look how much honor we're according you. We're putting you here between the king and the queen up front. Amr lays, so Shem Meshatach wasn't impressed. And he responded, Love at Kamukrasli. You're not the one that's providing, giving me the honor. The Mukrasli, the Torah itself, is causing me this great honor. The Chsiv, as it says in Mishlei, Salsaleha, you will embrace, you will immerse yourself in Torah. So in Mecca, the Torah will lift you. The Torah will be mechabed you when you hug it. So the Torah is the one that's actually giving me the covenant, not you. Amr Allah, so Yana turned to his wife and he said, Take a look. Kachazes, don't you see the loy mikhabel moras that he's not accepting our authority? He's not accepting the authority of the king. He's responding in this way. Okay, so they proceeded further. They gave him the case of wine to be mazamet to make for everybody. Omar, so he said, I have, a, I have a problem. I'm in a quandary. How am I going to say here? I haven't eaten anything. How can I say the proper Berchas Zimun? What am I going to say? Instead of saying, I'm going to have to say, Bless is the one that Yana and his friends ate from his food. So he drank the cup of wine so that he could be eligible to say the proper nusach, the proper text of Baruch Shachal Mishaloi. You have the Kasachrinu Baruch. Indeed, they filled him another cup of wine and he made Zimon and he made Birch Samaz on account of the group. Continues the Gemara. Omar of Abba, Braid of Cheba Abba of Yechnam, Shimon ben Shatach, the Ovid, the Gameo David. Shem Meshatach, he did only according to his own opinion. He followed his own opinion. What he did, what he was the Avad, the Ligar Meyu Avad, he followed his own personal opinion. Meaning, nobody agrees to the practice that he followed. Why? One cannot be mighty the Rabbim. From their obligation, until he eats the kezayis of dagon. So when Shimon Meshatach said Baruch Shachal Mishaloi, and he said Baruch Hasamaza on behalf of the group, he, he followed his own opinion. We don't agree with it. In order to be mighty, the rabbim one needs to eat a kezayis dagon himself. And here he only drank some wine. Says the Gemara, okay, the son, the back says, okay, the son, as we learned in the Brisa, Rashim Gamliel Oimer. All of the Hisavimon, if one goes up and reclines on the bed with the group, with the group that we're eating, even if he only dipped with them a food in tzir in this fish brine, so he only ate a, a little bit with them. He only ate one dried fig. He can join the Zimun. He can be considered to be part of the Zimun, and they can count him in into their quorum, even if one only ate. A bit, a kezayis, kezayis with seer. The Paisim explained this to mean that he ate a, a bit of vegetable together with the bride. Together we have a sheer kezayis. Or a dried fig. 
that's sufficient to be included in the Zimah, as we mentioned earlier. He can be considered to be part of the Zimah, they can count him in as part of their required number of men for Zimah. But only it's Tarufi Mitzdar, if he can join them. But to go be mighty them with Berchas Hamazon, for that we require much more. Unless he eats a Kezayis of Dagon, he cannot be mighty them. So Yana, he merely drank a cup of wine. Okay, he could have been at star with the Zimun. They can count him in. He could respond with them, the Berchas Hamazon. But to be mighty them with Berchas Hamazon, for that he needs to eat a Kezayis Dagon. It's Menami, we learned also, even if he only dipped with them with brine, even he only ate a small amount, if indeed he can join them. But to exempt them from Bechas indeed the final ruling is, if he only ate a leaf of vegetable, he drank a cup of wine. This means a kezai is a vegetable or a revis of wine. But starif, certainly he can join them. But lahaitzi, to exempt them, a nemoitza sheikh kezai is dagam. Unless he eats a kezai of dagam, he can't be mighty them. So in summary, in order to be met starif lezimun, to join the others in their zimun, to complete their required quorum, one can even do so if he merely eats a kezayis of yorak or he drinks a revius of wine. And it says in Allah, not only wine, any beverage aside from water is suitable. However, to be moitzi haravim, to exempt others with birchas hamazayin, for that, one is required to have eaten at least a kezayis of dagon. And then he's able to be moitzi others with birchas hamazayin. Ask Rashi Akash, how can the Mura propose that had Shimon ben Shatach have eaten a kezayis of Dagon, then he could have been mighty Yanai and his friends with Birchas Hamazin. Yanai and his friends ate a large amount, a kedei svia, shim and shatach. If he eats only a kezayis Dagon, he can't be mighty them. Why? Because we know what is the required shear, what is the required amount in order to obligate one to Birchas Hamazin. So, Minat Torah, one is required to eat a shear kedei svia. An amount that satiates him, that fills him, as it says, However, Midr Abonon, one who merely eats a sheer kezayis, he's already obligated Birch HaSamazin. So ask Rashi, how could Shimon Man Shatach, on account of him eating only a sheer kezayis, which obligates him in Birch HaSamazin, Midr Abonon, how can it be mighty, Yana and his friends, that ate a sheer kezayis sevia, and they are mechuyim Birch HaSamazin in the Torah, how can a mechuyiv medrabonon exempt one who is mechuyiv in Torah? How can a rabbinic obligation exempt a biblical obligation? So we have three approaches. Rashi says, yes indeed. Apparently, even a person who is mechuyiv medrabonon, he's already attained the status of a mechuyiv bedavar, one who is obligated in this matter, and he can indeed be mighty another person even though his chiv is only drabana, and the other person is the raisa. The Bahag says, apparently, Yana and his friends had not eaten Kedai Svir. And they were only mechiv and Therefore, a mechiv and can be mighty them from the chiv and Taisvis adopts an entirely different approach. Taisvis says that we know that Kal Yisrael are raving zelazeh. All Jews are responsible one for the other to ensure that our fellow Jew doesn't transgress any Averis and that he fulfills his obligations. And therefore, if my friend ate a shear that obligates in Birch Samazain, is considered as though I am also obligated in Birch Samazain, and I can recite Birch Samazain on his behalf, even though I haven't eaten anything. Therefore, Shimon Shatach was certainly able to be might see Yana and his friends. Says the Rosh, if so, why is the Gemara stipulate that one uh, needs to eat a shear kezai is dogan, in order to be might see one with Birch Samazain? Says the Rosh, that is a rabbinic obligation based on the Pasuk of Achalta Vesavata Verachta. Verachta, the one who eats, he's the one that's meant to make Bechas Hamazayin. So it's a Chiv Drabbanon. Not to bench unless you've eaten something. Unless you've eaten a Shir Kezayis. Therefore, the Gemara says, that needs to eat a Shir Kezayis Dagan. But with the rice, even that's not required. So in conclusion, once again, in order to be a Tzitarif Lezimon, 
to complete a Shir Zimon, to be included in a quorum of other people, even if one really eats a Kazai's Yorak or drinks a Rebbe's Yayin, that's sufficient. Not to be mighty Rab de Chavasam, Min de Rabbanon, he needs to eat a Kazai's Dogan, Min Atayra. Even that's not required. Why? Because Kal Yisrael Arevim Zelaze. Continues the Gemara. So who composed Berchas Hamazim? Omar Abnach, Moshe, Tiken Le Yisrael Berchas Hazon. Moshe composed the first bracha of Zan Asylum when Be'esha Sheyar Le'amon, when the Mon came to Kal Yisrael. Yoshua, Tiken Le'am Berchas Ha'aretz. He composed the second bracha, Berchas Ha'aretz, of Neidelcha, which makes reference to Eretz Yisrael when Be'esha Shenechus Ha'aretz. David the Shlaimai Tiknu Bani Yishlaim. They jointly compose the third bracha Bani Yishlaim. David Tiken Al Yisrael Mecha Va Yishlaim Irecha. U Shlaimai Tiken Al Abayis Hagoda Va Kadosh. On account of him building the Beis Hamikdash. Regarding the fourth bracha Vatoi Va Meitav Be Yavne Tiknu. They compose it in Yavne on account of the great miracle that occurred to the Haruge Beta Kinegad Haruge Beta, the one that were killed, the ones that were killed in the great city of Beta. On account of the great miracle that occurred with them, Damar Masna Oisa Ayoim, that day that that they were finally Shanitna Rugabeta look for that finally the Rugabeta were laid to rest, were afforded burial. Tiknu Biyavna Toiva Metiv. On that day, they established the Toiva Metiv. Why? Ha Toiv, Hashem the good one, Shalla Yisrichu. On account that they didn't decay. Vahmetiv, the one that exudes goodness, Shanitn Lukvura, because they were finally afforded burial. So account of this great nace. They were masake in the bracha atayv ametiv. Tana rabbanon, say the bracha samazan kachi. This is the sequence of bracha samazan. Bracha rishayna, bracha sazon, shnia, bracha saaretz, shlishes is bani yushalayim, revius is atayv ametiv. Ube shavas, on shavas we're meant to mention the kedushas hayoyim, the sanctity of shavas. So where do we do so? Says the brayz. We're meant to insert it into the bracha. Of Nechama, as Rashi says, it begins with Rachem or Nachmenu, depending on the Gersa, the third bracha of Bechsamazayim. But we don't alter the text. We don't alter the opening of the bracha, nor the, the conclusion of the bracha. We recite it as usual, Maschel ben Nechama, or Masayim ben Nechama, Va'oymek, Dushayya We recite the reference to the sanctity of the day in the middle of this bracha, as we do today. We say Ritzay, in the middle of the bracha of Nechama. So this is the opinion of the Tanakhama. Reb Lezo, he has a choice. Ratzah, if he wants, Lo'imra ben Nechama, Oimra. If he wants, Berecha Sa'aretz, if he wants to insert it into the second bracha, Berecha Sa'aretz, Oimra. If he wants to insert it into the bracha of Ateve Meitev, the bracha Shatik Nechama B'Yavna, Oimra. So he has a choice. He can put it into one of these three brachas. Finally, V'chacham or Oimra? Ein Oimra, Ela ben Nechama B'Vad. He has only one option. In Tanechama. If so, says the Gemara, this sheet is exactly the Tanakhama, so why does the Brisa present them as two different opinions? They both said that Shabbos goes into the Brichas Nechama. So what is the difference? It could be now the Eved, after the fact, if he hadn't followed instructions, what is the Halacha of Brichas Nechama? According to Tanakhama, preferably, he's meant to mention Shabbos in Nechama, but with the Eved, if he hadn't done so, if he inserted into, for instance, Brichas Haaretz or Hatayv HaMetiv, he's Yaitse, he's Brichas Hamazon. He need not recite again. According to the Chacham, however, it is an absolute. If he doesn't follow instructions, he needs to recite Berchas Hamazon again. And finally, according to Blazer, we give him the options. He can put it into one of these three brachas, either Nechama, or Berchas Ha'aretz, or Hatayv HaMetiv. Tana Rabbanon, me nayin le Berchas Hamazon in the Torah. Where do we find the source of Berchas Hamazon in the Torah? Shenem ha'arvah chalta v'savato v'rachta. And the Pazah continues, v'rachta z'shem al-kecha. Explains the price. This teaches us Zubirchas, and Taisis has a girsa, Zubirchas Hazimon. It's referring to the Birchas Hazimon, which begins with Navarich. So this is learned from Vachalta Vasavat Uvirachta. The Pasa continues as Hashem Alekach. Zubirchas Hamazon. So this is referring to Birchas Hazan, the first bracha of benching Hazan Asylum. Allah Oretz. This is referring to Zubirchas Haoretz. Which is the bracha of Neidelcha. Hatoiva, this is teaching us Zubayn Yerushalayim. The bracha of Bayn Yerushalayim, as we find that the, the term Hatoiva is mentioned in reference to Yerushalayim. 
Ashenosalach, and the Pasuk concludes Ashenosalach. This is the source of the bracha Zuhatoi Vameitiv. The source of the bracha Zuhatoi Vameitiv. Apparently, this sheet holds that Zuhatoi Vameitiv is Midaraisa. Now, Eli Elola Achrov, we have a source for making a bracha after eating. How about beforehand? Well, the fun of Menai, and how do we know the one is obligated to make a bracha before eating? Amr's Kabachim will derive from a Kabachim. He'll say as follows. So, Amr, you say the following Kabachim. If one is meant to make a bracha, when he's full, when he's satiated, he's meant to make a bracha. Certainly, certainly when he's hungry and when he's desperate, he needs the food to fill him and to satiate his hunger. In that case, certainly, of course, he's meant to thank Hashem for affording him this, this great opportunity and providing him this food to eat. So certainly, a bracha is in place. Now, Marsha points out, this is merely a rem as a hint to the concept of making a bracha prior to eating, since we know that certainly the bracha before eating is not rooted in a biblical obligation, but really it's the Rabbana. So this is a rem as a hint from the pasta regarding the bracha prior to eating. So this is the shita of the Tanakama. Rebbe Aymer, ain't it Tzorich? Rebbe disagrees on a number of accounts. He says, we have a different source for Bricha Sazimun, we have a different source for Ateva Meitiv, we have a different source for the bracha prior to eating. As follows. This teaches us the first bracha of Bricha Mazan, Azam Sailam. Ava Bricha Sazimun, that's derived from a different pasuk. That is learned from God as we learned in the beginning of the Perek that one person declares to others, calls out God Lashamiti. Declare to the praise of, Hash, of our, the praise of Hashem with me, together with me. So this is the reference to the joint praise of Hashem that is recited by three people. So this is the source of the concept of Birchas Azimun. Continues the Rebbe, Allah Oretz. What about Hatoiva Meitiv? That is merely a rabbinic obligation. It was established by the Rabbanon and Yavna. Hatoiva Meitiv Yavna Tiknua. And Eilil Akrov, okay, we have a, a source for the bracha after eating, Lafon of Menayin. What about before eating, Tamad Loima, Asher Nasanlach? The Pasuk concludes with the words Asher Nasanlach. We make a bracha. Asher Nasanlach, Mishan Nasanlach. As soon as Hashem gives it to you, He provides you with the bread, He provides you with the food, you are required already to make a bracha. So this is the source of the bracha prior to eating. Continues the Gemara. Rabbi Yitzchak Yomar, ain't it tzarech? We have a different source. We don't need this source for the bracha prior to eating. We have another source. Rabbi Yomar, uberech aslach mechavas memech. Hashem will bless your bread and your water. I'll take you uberech. Don't read a berech. Instead, read a lubarech. You should make the bracha. You're required to make the bracha prior to eating. It's a tzibu, it's a commandment. The pasuk says, "Ubarech es lachmecha." Make a bracha on your bread. When is it considered to be lechem, tangible bread? Apparently, it's kaim shechlan prior to eating. So this is the source of the bracha prior to eating. Reb Nasnai made it sarech. We don't need a source from there. We have another source. Harei Yoimer. It says the following pasuk. This was when Shaul was looking for Shmuel, and he asked the woman for his. They went for his whereabouts and they responded. So the women responded as follows When you come to the city, this is how you'll find the term prior to him going up to the Bama, Lechel to eat the carbon. Because the nation will not eat, they wait. Until Shmuel arrives. Because he will be the one to make the bracha prior to eating the carbon. Afterwards, the other invitees will eat. So we see a source for a bracha prior to eating. So this will be the source for us as well. Says the Gemara. They could have answered so much more briefly. Why, why did they prolong? Why they, were they so wordy in their response? You'll find them before he goes to the Bama and he makes the bracha and they're waiting for him. It was a very lengthy response. Says the Gemara. Why did they prolong their reply? Lafi because Shanoshan Dabrani is same. Because women uh, are talkative by nature. And they tend to describe things in, in great detail. So that's why they were so detailed in their response. 
Shmuel Amar. Shmuel gives another reason. Shmuel was very beautiful and tall. He was a head taller than everybody else. So they wanted to take this opportunity to gaze at his beauty. That's why they prolonged in their response to him. You know what the reason is? Because, as Rashi explains that up until here, Shmuel was the leader. And now it came time to hand over the leadership to Shaul. Says the Gemara, every leader has a predetermined time, an appointed time, that he's meant to lead Kali Yisrael that time. One doesn't interfere with the other, even a minute amount. And therefore Hashem arranged that they should prolong their response to delay matters so that the predetermined moment that was, a, that was destined for Shaul to take over the leadership of Kali Yisrael will arrive. Everything is exact and precise. Again, Rabbi Yechonam Alefi, why did Hashem arrange that they should prolong in their, in their response? One Malchus doesn't touch, doesn't interfere in the other one. I feel like Nima, even a drop, even a hair's breadth. Hashem arranged that there should be that little bit of, of delay so that the appropriate time will arrive for Shaul to take over the leadership of Kal Yisrael. Now, interesting that the Gemara in Yuma brings this and adds another element. The Gemara there is speaking about a family that, that their livelihood, that Parnassah was taken away from them and eventually it was restored to them. And the Gemara says, look, you see from here, that livelihood sustains Parnassah is predetermined from Hashem and Rosh Hashanah. One should never be concerned that somebody else will encroach on his, on his Parnassah, on his livelihood, will interfere with his sustenance. Everything is precise. Is, is, is predetermined in a very exact manner from Shemaim. A person's parnasa that is death, destined to him will arrive to him regardless of the human elements. And therefore, one should always be calm and confident regarding his livelihood. So the Gemara says, we see from that story there, that she'in adam no'igeya b'muchan l'chaveri One person doesn't have the ability to touch, to interfere to encroach on something that is muchan l'chaveiroi, that is prepared for his friend, afilu kum nima. The same term the Gemara uses here, even a, a hair's breadth. And the Gemara then says the same thing regarding Malchus, as the Gemara says here. So, we're meant to be calm and secure and confident that everything is predetermined, predestined, and directed from heaven, only from heaven. We know the famous story of the Chavetz Chaim's Rebetzin, who had a, a store, and when the competition opened up, it is said that she went and she assisted her, she advised her how to conduct her business. She was a person who believed wholeheartedly in this chazal, in this concept that parnosa, livelihood, is predetermined, predestined in a very precise and exact amount from Hashem. Whatever is coming will come regardless of the human element. Continues the Gemara. So we have a source regarding Berchas Hamazon. What about Birchas HaTorah the obligation to recite Birchas HaTorah? Where is that sourced? Omer Yishmol, Kavachomer, we'll learn it from Kavachomer. Al Chayesham Mevarech, if one is meant to make a brach on Chayesham, merely physical, worldly, this worldly matters, temporary matters, physical matters, eating physical foods, that requires a bracha. Certainly Al Chayesham Mevarech, like Koshkin, certainly an eternal life, Torah which provides one with eternal nitzchiyas sustenance, certainly a bracha is in place. So Rechim Nachmeni, who was a student of Rishmol, said in the name of Rishmol, in its Tzorich. A source need not be learned from the Kavachayim. We have another source. Heri Oymer, Allah Oretz HaToy V'Shanos Halach. The Pasuk obligates a bracha, and the Pasuk says, So we have Xer Shava. It says, Nasan Lach, the term Nasan here, or Lahal and Oimer, and elsewhere we find the term Nasina in a different context regarding Torah, the Etnacha, as Luchosa Evan, the Torah Mitzvah. So we see the Lashon Etna with regard to Torah. Therefore, we derive from Xer Shava that Torah too requires a bracha. Just like the, the Pasuk here references bracha with regard to Nasina, 
to make a shava to the, the reference to the, the term of Esnalach regarding Torah, that Torah also requires a bracha. Rebmei Oimer, another concept, Minayin Shekeshem, Shemavarach al How do we know that just like a person is meant to thank Hashem upon giving him goodness, Kach, so too Mavarach al Ra, he's meant to thank Hashem for Ra, for tragedy, for misfortune. Talmud Laima Shanasalach. We learn from the Pasuk of Hashem Nasalach, Hashem Alekecha. The Pasuk says, Hashem Alekecha Hashem Nasalach. This teaches us that Yoncha Bechol Din Shadoncha, Be Mi De Toiva, Be Mi De Peronius. We learn from, from here, Hashem Alekecha, Asher Dayan, the Bach says, Hashem Alekecha, Asher, the Yoncha. We thank Hashem, Hashem, who has judged you in any way. Behold in Shadoncha, in any way that he has judged you. Bein mi the toiva, bein mi the peronis. Whether it's something good, whether it's something bad. So this is learned from the Pasuk. The aforementioned Pasuk of Bachalta, Vesavata, Verachta, Es Hashem Alekecha, Lor, Es Hashem 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 Loch. So we learn from here that whatever Hashem gives you, Hashem Hashem Loch, whatever Hashem gives you. And we go back in the Pasuk to Hashem Alekecha, Asher, meaning Hashem Alekech Asher Nasan Lach. So it's a it's a drasha. The Hashem Alekem that provided to you, and as the Mashal explains, that Hashem is Midas Harachem Alekech Midas Hadin. So one denotes Chesed. Hashem gives you kindness, something good, which appears to be Toiv Alekech Midas Hadin. The the name of Hashem with with reference to the attribute of Din of harshness of judgment. So whichever way Hashem relates to you. Whether he gave you a toiva, me the toiva, me the pranis, and in either way, regardless, you must thank Hashem and give him a bracha. Rabbi Dovin said, "Rami ain't tzarich." This is going back to Berachas Atayra. We don't need those sources. We have a different source. How are you? I'm a toiva. How toiva? The pasuk says, "A berach l'shem l'kech al aretz." How toiva? So toiva zu toira. The pasuk says, "How toiva," which is an added hey. So we learn from here. It's coming to add something. To include Torah, which is referred to as Toiva, something good. I've given you this Toiv, which is Toiva, which is Torah. So we see that Torah is referred to as Toiv, and therefore it requires a bracha. Ha Toiva Zubini Yushalayim. The He is coming to make reference to the bracha Bini Yushalayim. So the same word teaches us two things. The word Ha Toiva. Includes Torah, which is Torah, the bracha on Torah, and Hatayva, referring to the bracha of Ben Yishalayim, the third bracha of Bracha Samazan. Chenu Oimer, that we see that Yishalayim is referred to as Toiv, Chenu Oimer, her Atoiv, Hazev Alavonin. So, in summary, regarding the source of Bracha Samazan, the Tanakhama says as follows Bracha Hazimun is learned from Bachalta Vazavata Verachta. Bracha Hazan, meaning the first bracha of Hazan Sa'ilam. That is derived from Hashem Alekecha. The Birch HaSa'aretz, Noi Delecha, that we learn from Allah Oretz. Boini Yerushalayim is learned from HaToiva. HaToiva Ametiv is learned from Hashem Salach. The Bracha prior to eating is from a Kalva Choymer. If you're meant to thank Hashem by say, when you satiate your hunger, certainly beforehand, when you're hungry and you need the food to satisfy your hunger, you're meant to make a Bracha. Reb Meir says, Birchas Hazimun is learned from God Lashamiti. The bracha of Hazan Asa'ilam, that is learned from Bachal to Vasavat Verachta. The word Haaretz teaches us, the word Al Haaretz teaches us Birchas Haaretz. The word Hatoiva teaches us Bani Yushalayim. The bracha of Hatoiva Meitiv, that was composed in Yavne. And how do we know the bracha Lafana before eating from the Pasig of Asher Nasalach, when Hashem already gives you the food that requires a bracha? We have two other opinions regarding the bracha before eating. Rabbi Yitzchak says that's learned from a Barech Eslach Mocha. And Rabbi Nassim says that is derived from the Pasu regarding Shmuel. He will make a bracha prior to eating the carbon, apparently. One is meant to make a bracha prior to eating. Regarding Birchas HaToyra, the bracha made before learning, according to Rishmol, from a Kavachaymer. If we went to make a bracha on 
physical sustenance, certainly on spiritual sustenance, eternal life. Rav Chibar Nachmini says, it is learned from Asher Nosan Lach. Nosan is referring to Torah. And finally, Rav Yudhar Maseir says, we learn it from the word Toiva. And Toiva is Torah. Then is the Gemara. The bracha of Noid is meant to include the following description of Yisrael. Eretz Chemda, Toiva Rochava, the desired land, the good one, and the spacious one. And it is a prerequisite. These items must be included in Birchas If somebody doesn't, he's not Yetzir. Or he has not included, he's not made mention of Malchus Beis David, the kingdom of David Amalek Bebani Yushalayim and the Bracha Bani Yushalayim. He's not fulfilled his obligation. Why, says Rashi? Because Al Yadai, on account of David Amalek, Nizkat Yushalayim, he was the catalyst for Kedushas Yushalayim. So that's why it's a required element in the Bracha of Bani Yushalayim. Nacham Azakar Aimer, Tzorach Shiyizgo Babris. He's meant to mention in Birch HaSa'aretz, he's meant to mention Bris. Why? Explains Rashi. Because Eretz Yisrael was given to Avram Avinu. Sha'al Yidei Bris Nitnal Avram Pashas Mila. Because on account of the Bris, Eretz Yisrael was given to Avram Avinu and his children. Therefore, we're meant to mention Bris in Naidilcha. Rabbi Yisrael Aymer, Tzorach Shizk Baba Torah. We're meant to mention Torah in Birch HaSaretz. Why explains Rashi? Sha'af b'schus ha-Torah mitzvah yarsh HaSaretz. Therefore, since Torah is a catalyst for us inheriting our Yisrael, he's meant to mention Torah. So in conclusion, these are two required elements, bris and Torah. So which one is recited first? Says Gemar, plimu y'oymer, tzorech sh'yagdim bris la Torah. First bris and then Torah. Why? Shazu nitno b'shlelish brises. Because Torah was transmitted to Klai Yisrael with three brises, with three covenants, as Rashi explains. The Torah was transmitted to Klai Yisrael on three occasions, in Sinai, al Moed, and by Har, by, by Avris Moyav, and by Har Grizim. In three different occasions, Klai Yisrael was presented with, with the Torah. And in all those three places, there was a bris that took place, a bond, a covenant between Hashem and Klai Yisrael. And therefore, since Torah consists of three times bris, that is meant to come second. It's meant to come after bris milah. Since bris milah was given with 13 brises, as Rashi says in the Parshas Mila by Ramavinu, 13 times the Torah mentions the concept of bris. Therefore, bris is made, meant to take precedence. It's meant to be recited, to be mentioned before Torah, on account of the fact that bris is related to 13 brisos and Torah merely to 3 brisos.